Okay. Good afternoon. The Committee on Water and Land is on its agenda for Monday, March 4th in room 229. We do have uh, just a few housekeeping measures that we follow with regards to uh, our conduction of our hearings, because we also do it in person and on Zoom as well. So we welcome everyone. We got Senator Favela here, Vice Chair Alafanti here, and we'll, we'll have um, others walking in as well. Uh, we'd like to also, for those testifying uh, on Zoom as well, uh, we can stand on your written testimony. Otherwise, we're limited to one minute. And we will, um, the contact of this hearing uh, will uh, can be found on our legislature's website. The live video stream and archive of the hearing is on the Senate's YouTube channel. Uh, decision making will occur after we hear from the testifiers list. But members, where did our Senator Favela go? Okay, just to um, let you know, uh, we will be going through the agenda, but if there's um, no opposition or uh, we're going to take an out of the ordinary decision making today. So what we'll be doing is hearing the two first on the agenda, and then we will vote on it. So you don't have to really stay for the rest of the agenda items. Then we'll be taking the Kaho Olavi Commission uh, Reserve, um, and we'll take a vote, and then we'll go on our two um, at the end uh, as well. And so we're pleased to um, have our 2024 uh, hearing for the Committee on Water and Land. So the, you're the first group today of uh, several hearings that the Committee on Water and Land uh, on its confirmation process regarding to the governor's appointee and Senator Favela, if there's no objections, we're going to go out of order in a sense. So we're going to hear the first two. We'll take a vote, yeah. and then we'll go on and take a vote after each second. Well, really, good yeah. not going in order anyway. <laughs> okay. So we'll hear um, today. Uh, our first governor's message is five eight two, and this is submitting for consideration and confirmation to the Game Management Advisory Committee. Uh, the GM is Gonzalo Garcia for term to expire June 30th, uh, 2027. Uh, and um, Gonzalo, you're on Zoom. Can, can you hear us? Uh, I can, yes. Oh, okay, all right. And um, members, um, Gonzalo uh, is uh, on the mainland, uh, and we're fortunate that he was able to get uh, with us today, um, but he's there addressing some of his family's health issues uh, on the mainland, and uh, hope all is well, uh, Gonzalo, uh, but thanks for taking time. We'll uh, uh, allow you to um, say what you need to, and we won't uh, delay or or the work that you have there taking care of your sister. So aloha. Aloha and thank you. Um, first, I say, you know, I'm honored to be nominated and considered. Um, I had a really marvelous career with Chevron. I retired after 37 years. I've successfully managed, you know, inordinately large projects, of ecological restoration, habitats, and all this. Um, successfully manage those things. And the key things about that is it was a multiple stakeholders, legislators, regulators, and a great deal of public input as well. Um, I live in Kona, uh, Kailua Kona full time. I love this, I love my island, and I, I feel um, we're all kind of should be finding ways to give back. I think this is a, a really valuable way to give back to the community. Um, I also recognize that hunting in Hawaii is a place important cultural role. Um, it also is a, a food supply issue and, you know, food security. 
uh, and, you know, and, and certainly there's a lot of issues in how to manage that long term and going into the future to protect those rights for people. And um, basically, I, I hunt, I fish, I hike, I golf. I, I, I just feel like this is a perfect place to live. And uh, I'm thrilled to be here. And I'm happy to take any questions. OK. Uh, mahalo, uh, Gonzalo. Uh, chair would also like to um, at least let um, those on Zoom and the public anyway that this gay manage management advisory commission was newly formed several years ago and uh, this was established um, will they shall serve on an advisory capacity uh, to the board and it consists of several members uh, one from Kauai, three members from the county of maui two from the county of hawaii one from city and county of honolulu one at large, and the chairperson um, <clears throat> shall serve as an ex officio uh, voting member uh, as well. So with that, um, there we received two communications. DLNR, anyone here? Yes. With testimony, thank oh, you. Good afternoon. Mahalo, thank you for being here. Oh, thank you. Um, I don't know if you can hear me okay with the mask. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. And um, can you maybe kind of point the, the yeah okay. closer to the mic because we have uh, we have him on Zoom as well. Uh, I'm not sure how the reception is. Oh, sure. Sorry about that. Um, Catherine Stanaway, um, Department of Land and Natural Resources, Division of Forestry and Wildlife. We submitted testimony late. Um, we made copies for your um, reference. Do you need me to read the testimony or? We can continue to say you're in support. Okay, yeah, we're in support, and um, we're happy to take any questions. Okay, mahalo. Thank you, in case there's a question from our members here. Uh, we did receive uh, an opposition from Sybil uh, Lopez. Is she here? Okay, hearing not members, any questions of um, the nominee, Mr. Uh, Gonzalo? Senator Favela. I get about five. <laughs> Let's just go with that one first. Um, <clears throat> are you involved in any other schools in your area? Um, kind of. I, I'm supporting an effort to get into some of the high schools uh, a cardboard recycling program, and I'm initiating some discussions with some of the folks that have had a great deal of success in Oahu, and we're trying to help them expand that program into uh, West Hawaii. Uh, in particular, initially and on down through the south, and hopefully uh, as well as in the Hilo area. Uh, guys on uh, Oahu, is uh, that in Nanakuli High School you're working with? Um, it's, I can pull it up. I've only met with, I've seen them make two presentations. Okay. And, so I think I the teacher you're talking about is Piper, but yeah, she's phenomenal. She came and brought some of the products. Yeah. Okay, get on one now. What hunting experience do you have? So I've been a gun owner and a hunter since I was 18 years old. I'm, I'll be 66 this year. Uh, I've hunted predominantly pigs and upland birds on the mainland. And here in Hawaii, uh, last year I spent most of the year injured. <laughs> so I've had my shoulder rebuilt, my hip rebuilt, but I'm, I, I did get out and glass a lot of spots. And I'm anticipating going out and doing some upland bird and, and predominantly mouflon sheep and pig here on, on the Big Island. Okay, you ready to answer the third one? I get two more. Where do you uh, where do you go to hunt? So I've been looking. Um, I've, I've done most of my glassing around Mauna Kea so far, and uh, I've seen a lot of good birds up there, and I've seen uh, evidence of sheep and hogs up there. So I'm predominantly. I think that's where I would be targeting. What will you do to help control hunting population? Oh, that's that's a, a multifaceted question. There. We've got to look at you know the habitats and and how to preserve the you know the native ecology and still allow for uh, you know hunting and take and so uh, I think that's an area I still have a lot to learn um, uh, to be honest and I, I don't have an uh, an answer for you because I, I don't know enough yet. How do you feel about the, the hunting guide or some kind of guide that they'll be probably giving to hunters going forward um, and uh, be able to go online to do so? 
I, I think that in many cases, guides uh, are essential to a good hunt. You know, not everybody has the experience and knowledge. Um, you know, there's apps out there that people can use and all that. But I think that uh, guides under the right circumstances would be essential to taking animals humanely and, and successfully. So I, I don't have an issue per se with guides. Um, and, and I've heard a, a little bit of discussion about it so far. I've, you know, I've started to meet local hunters and all that. Um, so again, that's probably an area I, I still need to learn more about what are the issues, but I, I, in general, I'm supportive of guides. All right, thank you, thank you, Chair. Okay. Appreciate thank you. it. Any further questions, Senator Alfonti? Thank you, just one question I have for you and then the next agenda item, um, and thank you for taking the time, Mr. Garcia, is um, if, when, uh, if you are confirmed, um, what role would you suggest for being on the GMAC and getting actively involved with potential legislation or commenting on legislation as it deals with the areas that the GMAC would focus on? Well, I, I really see the, the GMAC as, as kind of an intermediary between the, the hunting public, the non-hunting public, and the, the regulatory and legislative groups. I think that we can be a two-way conduit of information and we can help bring to issue, uh, bring to light issues that the public has. And um, the, inversely, we can also educate, be a vehicle to help educate in our communities. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Any further questions? Um, Gonzalo, uh, the opposition communication we received, and I believe this probably could be from uh, the island of um, Molokai. And it's a, it's a nice criticism, something that the committee should be aware of. But it seems like um, the issue is uh, with regards to, and let me, let me read a portion of what the complaint or the comment is that she wants to bring attention uh, to this committee and that we need to know what has been going on wrong with DLNR and of course GMAC um, expressing they want to also express how important hunting and man game management uh, to us on Molokai and we want and she said continues to say we want to point out what has been transpiring since 2017 and the continued negligence of the agency, DLNR, and the GMAC uh, to the hunting community and DLNR's <laughs> continued disregard for public input and community consultation. Uh, and so with that said, um, hopefully when you start meeting uh, and bring up those issues or continue to work with DLNR to say, because there's a certain mission when this commission was set up as well. And so hopefully, um, I think we should take, um, you know, some interest on this communications in opposition, uh, just the concern from communities and in particular in Hawaii, we're all separate islands. And so we'll have to make sure that whatever or whenever you decide to hold <coughs> meetings as well, I would suggest, um, I was going to ask the question of the representative from the office, a DLNR, but she has since left here. So um, just to ask, she's is she still here? She's still oh, here. oh, I'm sorry. I saw somebody leave, but that wasn't you. <laughs> so maybe, um, uh, can you come up from DLNR and just to say, and I'm not familiar, not sure if you can answer the questions of how GMAC is handling their uh, hearings as well. But I think we need to take light uh, that, you know, a, this issue is being raised and that uh, now that we're in the confirmation process of the next um, uh, member as well, that they be aware that I think communications need to start with communities but can you share and see if you you're familiar with how the hearings has been handling yeah i apologize that i'm not oh, okay. um yeah i i haven't been on and and I, I haven't been in the meetings the gmac meetings so i i can't comment and on, perhaps you can share yeah. that 
you know, yeah, uh, I can concern raised and maybe um, check with staff that if you can pick up that opposition communication yes, or the definitely. testimony. Yeah. Uh, but this is, you know, um, I believe what we're in how many years now uh, of this um, commission. And so it was at the outset uh, from the hunter community, the hunting community that recreate this, this commission. Yeah. And so I think it's important because hunting is part of our lifestyle here in Hawaii. Yeah. Uh, but we want to make sure that the community is involved as well Definitely. and that the commission should um, at least I hope uh, and maybe um, just give I uh, have the office give us a report um, and you can send it uh, to 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 myself the chair and I'll share it uh, so far how many meetings have been conducted throughout the years since the inception of this commission oh, sure. okay yeah uh, okay thank you thank you so much Okay, any further questions on this? Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Garcia. And uh, what we're going to be doing is we'll continue on the next um, uh, GM uh, as well. And then we'll be taking a vote. So you won't have to be too long uh, on, on Zoom as well. Okay, uh, members, let's then con continue on to what happened to my hearing notice now. Here we go. Okay. We'll proceed then with GM583, and this is submitting for consideration and confirmation uh, to the Game Management Advisory Committee, Michael Johnson, for a term to expire June 30th, 2007. Mr. Johnson. Hi. Come on now. Good to see you. Come on here. Yes. Okay. Welcome to the to the committee as well, and we appreciate um, your service as well to be on this commission. Uh, we also want to uh, ensure that uh, with this newly board uh, that we established several years ago, um, that uh, it's uh, serving its purpose. And we appreciate um, you taking the time to come from Maui uh, to be here with us. And Mr. Um, Johnson's confirmation, he will be, he is representing the member out of the uh, County of Hawaii representing the island um, as well. And so um, your interest in serving on this measure, on this board. Um, thank you for having me, everyone. I'm, I'm really excited um, to represent Maui. Um, been hunting for several years now on Maui and, and it's really piqued my passion to help with our big problem, which I'm sure you all know, which is the access deer. Um, I have a few permits where I can do some um, animal control work. And alongside of that, I hunt in all of the areas that we have on Maui. And um, being a GMAC member, I definitely would like to be able to help with ideas, uh, propose recommendations um, for hunting areas, working with DLNR and DOFA um, and helping them with, you know, boots on the ground type of um, evaluations that I can do and helping just uh, help the land, you know, heal because of what's happening. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a huge problem. I see it every day I go hunting um, and what they're doing to the land. So. I have two young kids and one of them just got his hunting license, so I want to help him grow and become a good hunter and pass all of everything I've learned onto them as well. I'm working on my daughter, she's a little bit older, so we're working on the whole uh, hunting um, license and et cetera with that. So um, yeah, I'm super excited and I hope that I can move forward and help for years to come. Okay. You've um, heard uh, uh on the previous testimony of um, uh, that came in from uh, Ms. Lopez, uh, concerns about the committee uh, as well, and their hearings um, in the past, uh, just concerned that you know there doesn't seem like there's some communications with with the communities. As, so perhaps you play a key, uh, a uh, a role 
in making sure that the committee, uh, the commission, has a good communication skills working with communities. We had our first meeting uh, last week and it went pretty well. It was my first one. I learned a lot um, and I'm excited to help progress with the game management uh, committee as well. Um, I did read the uh, testimony mm -hmm. and um, there's some valid points for sure. And I would like to learn from those as well, you know, and uh, and help move forward. Okay, since you've attended one meeting already, so are they goals? Oh, it has the um, commission um, also traveled to the neighbor islands to hold their hearings? We only we came to we came here. Okay, came to Oahu, so I didn't hear anything of going to neighbor islands or whatnot. Oh, will you consider bringing it up during your hearings? That would be um, as well. Yes. Yeah, we know you're all unpaid volunteers, <laughs> but uh, we also you also represent the state uh, and the counties as well. So hopefully that can be worked out working with the LNR. I can bring that up. For sure. Yes. And make sure that uh, at least, um, you know, once a year, go to Maui, uh, go to the Big Island. Sure. Uh, big Island is a big island, so right. I think you need two meetings, one in West Hawaii and one in the East Hawaii as well. Okay. Uh, any questions of Mr. Johnson? Senator uh, Elefanti, Vice yeah. Chair. Th thank you, Mr. Johnson, um, you know, for taking the time to meet with me. And um, the one question I did ask you in our meeting, and I asked it to Mr. Garcia, is uh, how do you see your role in commenting on legislation um, before the legislature, given your experience that you have? Um, I really want to help, like I said, you know, advise with regulations, um, again, working with uh, DOFA and DLNR, and then taking that information and really representing the hunters on Maui. That's the main course of action for us. And then hopefully taking that information and, and proposing it to you senators as well. I was excited to meet with the ones I could on Zoom and then hopefully give that information and, and learn from all this experience mm -hmm. as the years go on and, and propose it. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. Okay. Thank you, Madam Any Chair. Any further questions? Senator yes, McAlvey. Yes, thank you for being here. Appreciate you making it over. Um, you know, one of the areas that has been an issue and that the legislature has looked at, but it's been an ongoing issue, has been hunters' ability to be able to conduct hunts on large acreages of land that's private land. And to touch on the access deer issue as part of you know, game management controls, being able to, do you see yourself being able to advance this conversation and perhaps make recommendations to us on some types of ways that we can facilitate responsible hunting into these areas? I do. I actually um, met with um, uh, Shane D'Amato and John Maderos last week. We had a meeting in the morning, wildlife biologist and the game management uh, manager. And we discussed um, some of those areas that they're working heavily on. One of them um, that came into action a few weeks ago, a couple months ago, was the uh, Waiohuli area, mm -hmm. uh, working with DHHL, Park Hawaiian Homeland. Mm -hmm. And I actually went there this past, uh, I went there yesterday actually, Sunday, and was able to access that new hunting area because they want to open it up obviously to the hunters to help control the access deer on that it's specifically set for access deer so it was uh it was good for me to go down there and, and definitely take a look around it's a huge area i want to take that information to one of our hunting meetings we have this wednesday evening and get them involved with that but i do want to help get areas available to hunters so we can work on that problem do sure. you think that could help address some of the most efficacy and, and concerns and criticisms of costs insofar as eradication programs? Currently, it's by air, right? Helicopter shoots. Do you right. think the hunting community could provide more of an effective means of in those areas instead of going to that as the only option? I do. I think uh, helicopter eradication is really costly. There's a lot that goes on with that. I think the hunting community um, can definitely make a big impact. And it's just about uh, us getting out there and doing what is set forth, and that will make an impact. You know, the deer don't just stay in one area, mm -hmm. as an example, they do get pushed. So you can hit an area fairly hard consistently, but the deer are smart, that's why there are so many of them. Mm -hmm. They're gonna move outside of those boundaries. So it would be a good goal for myself and working with the other departments to make sure that we can 
pushed set up, up other areas as know, well. We pushed them out of the range of the watershed down into the lower area. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah. I work with an area down in uh, South Maui, a Hihi Canal, mm -hmm. it's a reserve. Mm -hmm. So I work with DOFA on that, um, mm -hmm. and they want you know the goats eradicated yeah. and the deer as well. Um, so I've been doing that now for a few years. Um, I, I, it's it's a big conservation effort. I'm pretty excited to continue working with with that group as well. <coughs> Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Um, also a suggestion um, is that there's several bills and members remind me as well um, that's addressing uh, hunting. And I think there's one with regards to allowing um, hunting and a forming of an organization um, for hunters on, I guess, it's it's not um, a, uh, a tourist attraction, but hunting, and I understand I had on the big island, I've known a friend who did gu guiding tours, and there's a measure with regards to the guiding tours, uh, particularly on, uh, on lands uh, specifically assigned. So uh, hopefully that you bring it up and making sure that uh, in your meetings ahead, uh, what measures, uh, session doesn't end until the first week in May, so we're not sure how far the measures are, but I know there's a Senate bill uh, regarding um, uh, uh, tour, uh, hunting, uh, guided, tour. guided tours uh, in the Senate, uh, which will be going over. Uh, so later on, I guess, after session ends and hopefully passes, um, and governor signs that it be brought up to the attention, and I'm sure DLNR uh, will be, uh, you know, very familiar with that process yes. as well. Okay. Okay. Any further questions? Yeah. Yes, Senator Favela. Well, similar to uh, just answering some of the questions during the questioning, but <clears throat> what is what what schools you are, are you in? Any schools you involved with? So my children right now are in uh, KA KA Charter School. Um, I'm also familiar with the new high school we have. Uh, that just opened up, as everyone's probably familiar with where the roundabout is. <laughs> um, they, they want me to be their air rifle coach over there. So um, I'm spread pretty thin. I'm not sure if I'll be able to do that, but I'm somewhat involved with their program as well. But Kihei Charter, um, involved with their activities, what they have going on there. I'm also working with um, the possibility of a secondary mobile processing unit coming up to Kamehameha schools, um, where we can hopefully have permission to um, control some of the access deer there, and then harvest and process the meat on their grounds. We want to feed the children in the cafeterias for all the Kamehameha schools, hopefully, and then have some classroom training as well for uh, the students. So they, when they, you know, get into hunting and processing, that will definitely be uh, something that would be great for the kids as they get older. Um, I'm really excited to work with that endeavor if it, if it comes to fruition. Okay, just right down the um, What kind of hunting experience do you have? I've been um, holding a rifle since I was 10 years old. I've been um, hunting on the mainland until I moved here. Um, when I moved to Maui, um, I became immediately passionate about the access deer situation here. So I worked pretty extensively to get on some permits. I think I have three or four permits right now where I can do uh, control, animal control work. So I harvest a lot of animals and um, again, I work with the E Canal to help uh, manage their um, goat issues down there too. So I'm pretty passionate about it. Um, yeah. Quite a bit of experience. What kind of um, hunting organizations that you have been involved with? Um, so far in Maui, I haven't been involved with a specific organization. Uh, we're having probably a, a meeting this Wednesday that I'm going to try to attend, hopefully with uh, Shane D'Amato, the wildlife biologist, and then start to get me familiar with all the hunting organizations on Maui and then move forward with that. And the last one, because you're reading an answer to Fort one um, what have you done to help control the hunting population? Uh, personally, I have a permit on a private land area. Um, I think I helped eradicate or control over 300 access deer just last year. Um, and then quite a few animals down at a Hee Canal. 
um, the other hunting areas where I can go, where I can take my son now that he's 10, I'm teaching him the ways there. And so we're always working on that. All of the access deer that we harvest uh, last year when they had the wildfires, I probably donated about 100 pounds of meat mm -hmm. to a couple of hubs over there. Um, they were pretty excited about that. And so it's pretty passionate. I mean, it's my wife teases me because I call it my second job, although I don't get paid, but I'm always harvesting and processing meat. And that's funny. Is, um, I don't know if you've seen, but there's a, there's a bill going through the Senate to um, not let uh, anyone under 21 handle ammunition or any kind of bullets and all of that. Um, how, do, how are you going to, you know, work that in, um, knowing that you, you know, your sons are all, you know, passionate hunters, just like the dad. How, how can you go forward to um, let, let them know that um, there's going to be laws like this coming up? Right. It, that's a, it's a big question. I mean, 21 years of age to be able to purchase ammunition, you know, that's uh, falls in line of, you know, almost like alcohol to me. Um, I think when you're 18, you're old enough to, you know, you're an adult. I think an 18 year old should be allowed to purchase ammunition. I think if you have the right qualifications, a hunting license, which my son has it when he, he acquired it this year, he's 10 years old. Now he has to wait till he's 21 possible to buy ammunition. That's going to be an issue. I'd like to be involved to help, you know, keep that age, you know, at least to 18. Um, that's where I stand on that right now. Thank you. Just one, one follow up. It's just, we, there's a lot of confusion on, uh, you know, there's a lot of bad things are happening with weapons and these guys are getting illegal. Like you as a responsible dad, taking your child, I send it down to you and going forward and going online to getting your hunting permit for your son to go hunting. What more that we can educate the people that don't know the process that you go through and how hard it is. It's not that easy to do what you guys do to stay legal. How can we educate the non-hunting public population and people that don't even know what is a 22 to from a regular bullet to a pellet gun? How can we educate them on that? How can we try to go out there? Because the legislation, we got to educate them because now they're banning people at that age, like you said, to be able to go hunting with their dad right. and generation to generation in Hawaii now. Right. They're being so restrictive of guns on all these non-violent people, that, like you owners, you know how expensive your guns are. Sure. But the criminals are the ones getting the guns. Sure. And then we be, we banning law-abiding citizens. Right. So how can we educate those people that don't know nothing about guns, don't know nothing about bullets, and that guns don't kill people, people kill people. Correct. Can Correct. you explain to me how can we educate them so we can make some kind of legislation? That's a, that's a great people, a great question. Um, I mean, educating children would be easy. We can do that in the school system. Educating adults, that would be, I mean, I don't have an answer. If it's word of mouth, if yeah. it's social media, or, or if it's just having the government facilities come, come up with ideas to help educate these people. I mean, hunting communities and organizations would be a great way to start, but you can't have people that want nothing to do with hunters, guns, and ammunition to be involved. So it's a question that would require a lot of thought. I would love to be involved to, you know, talk with you about that as well. Yeah. Yeah. So just last question. So what you think so besides banning assault rifles and having young kids have bullets um, going forward that we should have at least a coalition of hunters and non-hunters to go over what should be banned and that should not be banned? Because people are making these laws in this building, but they never had a gun in their life. Right. You know, and I think that is sad for our young, you know, I thank you for what you're doing with your child and educating them, you know, about the weapons, but Maybe later on we get together because we need to do something like that because we're banning stuff that people don't even, I don't even know some of those guns. Right. You know, and it's sad. Right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Chair. Thank you. Senator Vavella brings up um, some good points and perhaps what I mentioned previously with regards to some of the bills that's being heard now between the House and the Senate that um, Perhaps if it's, um, it can fit the schedule for your hearings, um, 
you know, I'm not sure how many, how many hearings um, have you been told that you'll be hearing this year or the commission's uh, agenda? I we set one up for April. Okay. And then possibly So that would be a good time, maybe, if you can talk to, uh, now the conduction of um, the commission is by DOFAR. Okay, so perhaps if you can um, also communicate with them before the April meeting that if they could bring up on the agenda pending legislation and maybe you folks discuss the issue because the, the bill that Senator Favela um, uh, speaks about, uh, we debated that today because we're voting on it tomorrow. And so it'll be crossing over to the house. To the house, I'm not sure what we will be receiving from the house to the Senate, but it'll be good for something of that nature, particularly the issue with regards to the uh, the youngsters and the ability to get their hunting uh, license as well as purchase of uh, you know. I'm not sure if I'm able to even vote on the 21 year olds going out to go purchase a gun but um, but it's something for for GMAC to bring up and kind of look at it and discuss it and then yeah. going forward uh, you won't accomplish much uh, but you'll be able to know what's happening in the Senate I mean in the in the lead at the legislature with pending bills and so you know it's something good to be discussed now and then work on uh, if those bills passes uh, then also, uh, most of the bills also say that reports are being should come back to the legislature before the session of next year. So it's it's something that you folks should be active on, uh, GMAC, and make some recommendations as well. Because you can we can pass bills, as Senator uh, did say as well. But you know what? Sometimes we look at it and it's a bad bill at the outset or some recommendations that GMAC would say, you know what, maybe we should look at making some amendments or whatever, but sure. you know, something for discussions. Yeah, if, uh, if you're allowed to have a hunting license when you're 10 years old, you go through the hunter safety course. Okay. You sure. get your card, you get your hunting license in the state of Hawaii, but yet you're gonna have to wait till you're 21 to buy ammo. Mm -hmm. It yeah. should be, so, you know. We've given you some work. <laughs> you know, Chair, just a quick one. You know, I think what I said that I think about is that you was talking and, and thank you for giving the information to him. At 18 years old, you can go to war and die, but then you cannot come over here to hunt and buy, a, buy bullets. Right. Sad. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, we've received uh, communications um, uh, with regards to uh, GM583, who is Michael Johnson, uh, DLNR. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, Members of the Committee, Catherine Stanaway, deal on our uh, Commission of Forest Street and Wildlife. We submitted testimony late and we stand on your testimony. Thank Support. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You can have a seat now. Uh, we've also received communication from Roger Withington, um, and he's, de he's, uh, defend, uh, he's testifying uh, for the club, which is the Worthy Garden Club, in support. Uh, also in support comes from Cha uh, Joseph Charles Fell McDonald, uh, Ryan Hertz, Nicole Johnson, uh, Chris DiMarchi, uh, as well as um, Sybil Lopez that previously had sent communication in opposition, but some recommendations that should be brought to our attention uh, as well. Okay, uh, with that said, any further discussions on uh, GM583 uh, members on Michael Johnson. Hearing none, then uh, this concludes uh, the confirmations of GM582 and 583 with regards to the Game Management Advisory Committee. Um, so members, uh, we won't go into recess, but would like to um, uh, proceed with taking a vote um, on these two measures. Um, on the first one, GM582, this is submitting for consideration and confirmation to the Game Management Advisory Committee, uh, Gonzalo Garcia, for a term to expire June 30th, 2027. Okay. Um, any discussions? Hearing none, uh, Vice Chair, for the vote, um, Chair votes aye. Okay. 
Chair's recommendation is to advise and consent on GM 582. Chair Noy votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Chang. Aye. Senator McKelvey. Yes. Senator Favela. Yes. Madam Chair, recommendation is adopted. Okay. Thank you. GM 583 submitting for consideration and confirmation to the Game Management Advisory Committee, Michael Johnson, for a term to expire June 30th, 2027. Any discussions? Hearing none, Vice, uh, Vice Chair for the vote. Chair goes aye. Chair's recommendations to advise and consent on GM 583. Chair Noy. Aye. Yeah. Votes aye. I vote aye. Senator Chang. Aye. Senator McKelvey. Yes. Senator Favela. Yes. Madam Chair, recommendations adopted. Thank you so much. Okay, congratulations. congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Okay, we'll proceed then, uh, members, to the next group. Uh, this is GM584. Uh, this is submitting for consideration and confirmation to the Kaho'olawe Island Reserve Commission. Uh, Saumalu Mata'afa for the term to expire June 30th, 2027. Okay, and Aloha. He's on Zoom today. Um, he had uh, been on um, in person on an interview uh, with myself, <coughs> may have met uh, with you, but he is a very busy uh, person as well. Um, but do we have um, our Representative Mr. Michael Naho OPE, and he is the executive director with Kirk. Uh, hello, Senators. Aloha. Uh, Michael Naho OPE, executive director for the Kaho Lavi Island Reserve Commission. Uh, we'll extend our testimony in strong support for all the work that um, Commissioner uh, Salmalo Mata'afa does. He has a very busy job, and uh, he has been doing a lot of work for us as our acting chair, and um, we thank him for the time he spent with us uh, doing the act chair. Now he can become a regular commissioner with us. Thank okay. you. Thank you, mahalo. Uh, and members, um, Mr. Mata'afa is representing um, the county official appointed by the governor uh, and for the county of Maui. Okay. Uh, Aloha, how are you today? Aloha Chair, Aloha Vice Chair and committee members. I'm doing well, thank you. Okay, we uh, certainly thank you, Mahalo, uh, for serving on this uh, board as well. Uh, and Kirk has uh, been around for quite some time, uh, but also uh, enjoy having members uh, from the communities around Kaho'olawe and in particular on Maui. Let's, let's hear from you. Um, you're so busy, but you're busy again and yeah. doing more. Mahalo. Um, yes, thank you, Chair. And I just wanted to uh, say thank you for taking the time to hear uh, um, me seeking a second term with the Ko'olawe Island Reserve Commission. Um, I had the opportunity several years ago um, to go to Ko'olawe and take part in the restoration efforts. And I just wanted to tell you it had a lasting impact on me. Um, my role in the Kirk moving forward is going to be to continue working on our long term and our short short term goals and also making sure that the Kirk is in a, a good fiscal position moving forward um, in the in the near future. So that's kind of my goals for the Kirk if I am to be reappointed um, and I'm willing to take any questions that the committee may have for me at this time. Um, but I appreciate the time that you've taken today to sit down here and talk with me. Um, through this process. So thank you, Chair. Yes, um, a question that I, uh, and probably this could be uh, responded by Michael. Um, however, uh, how is our main boat and the condition of um, uh, the boat that, uh, that is used by Kirk to get to do the responsibilities of its mission? Um, since Michael, come on up, Mike. And since, um, but he's the chair too, so we can we can uh, we can share. So how are we doing with um, ah having mission? problems? Okay, uh, tell so, us. So we have a forty foot landing craft that we use to. Um, well, not only do we take people to Kahoalavi to do the restoration work, we run the base camp on the island. We make the power, make the water, cook the food, host everybody, house them on the island. And we transport them back and forth between the islands. 
and we do this with 16 people on our on our on our staff. Um, our boat right now, we're having some engine problems. Part of it is we're located on Maui, so it's hard to find people that want to work for the state and take a state PO and go through the high pro procurement process. And yeah, it's, you know, it's not like on Oahu. So we're having difficulty finding people that want to work on the boat. We finally, finally got somebody who want to work on the boat. Now we're trying to find dealers that want to sell us stuff. And that, you know, it just, it's a lot of things, but we're, we're working, we're making progress. Hopefully we'll have the boat back in the water soon and we'll start taking people. But we get a lot of support from a lot of friends who loan us boats. Um, um, one of the, my staff guys, his Calabash father loans us his boat and we use it to take people to the island. We can't take as much people, but we are still getting the work done. And then Noah helps us out whenever it's not whale season, they loan us their boat because uh, a lot of my staff are also crew for their boat as volunteer crew. So we help each other out on Maui. So did you ask us for some CIPs? Uh, it's not the money, really. It's more of the trying to find somebody that wants to do the work. But don't don't you need, though, a boat that's really working all the time? In I, I could always take CIP money to get a new boat. <laughs> I have a rope. <laughs> when, when, when did they, I mean, I've been on this mission yeah. with Kaho Olave Commission yeah. for my many years. Yeah. Back in my the first 10 years, I was here in the early 2000s, yeah. left and come, come back. But, you know, it seems like you need the boat. Yes, yes, yes. It, it, okay. it, it's our lifeline to get to the island. When did you get that boat? We got the it first time. just when I started there in 08. So it's about just 16 about years time, old. Just about yeah. the time I, before I left. Yeah. About 16 okay. years, yeah. All right. Yeah. And I've always complimented you folks and the commission as well. You know, I'm not the only one that flies as a legislator from neighbor island. Uh, and every week between Monday and Friday, I look over at Kaho Olave and I'll tell you the difference when I first started flying back in before the restoration started and what it is today complimented you folks all the time yeah. that I can see the greenery now and I can see buildings coming yeah. up. Um, but I think you really need to have well, that lifeline. We'll have a CIP request in for next year. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, I mean, it's nice that you're able to get some cocoa from yes. others. Yes. But a lot of people want to help us. Even Trilogy, the different boating companies, they they want to help us out, and we have Maui Ocean Center helping us out. So, you know, a lot of people kind of cocoa, but it's nice to have a dedicated boat so that we can make and sure the work is done. Maybe some dedicated funding. Yes. Tell them, ask them too if yeah. they can start contributing and create a fund and yeah. then ask for a CIP on your balance and start yeah. raising monies and get a new boat because. You know that's what you need to get the commission members over yeah. as well and and all those at cocoa to go over and i think uh the five of us better start getting active too when they get the new boat then we can go over and help you one weekend okay spend the time there <laughs> yeah, you know okay. with no crew though no the, the, the oh. thing is you know senator you know, out walks me up going here or down here so i don't know if i want to go on koho lobby and work with her probably going to fall down and have a heart attack but yeah i mean i mean she has that that stability of going moving around but not me okay all right you know, i'll just make we'll sure i'm a submarine i'm just gonna sink we'll be back okay. next session yeah all right yeah. yes i you know it's something of need uh yeah. no different than hospitals they need beds and need doctors you know they ask but you know um we have to remember yeah why and where and when Kaho Olavi became again a live active island uh, that seemed dead for many, many years under the military. And you folks, you were created, you know, um, and we'd like to help. So, yeah. okay. Yeah, and, and I also want to say thank you very much for the support last session for the um, increase in our operating funds that we were able to get into the administration budget and the bills that, that you guys introduced ask, but we never yeah. got a cip request okay yeah so, so thank next, you very much next year yeah. next year okay um any questions of saumalu mata'afa there so you have two questions yes. almost forgot okay. to ask them. senator favela <laughs> what did, what have you learned since uh 2019 and being being involved 
Uh, thank you for the question, Senator. And I'll just say um, the biggest thing I learned is, uh, especially from the Kirk administration side, is the ability to be adaptable because so many things get thrown at you and you have to be able to pivot on the fly. And so um, in working with the administration, the Kirk administration, at least, that's one of the biggest things I learned is being able to be adaptable and then hold meetings with the commission uh, to let us know what the issues are, if there are issues or the support that's needed, and then being able to work with them um, on our end to help them meet their goals. So that was probably the biggest thing is just being able to learn to be more adaptable and learn to kind of troubleshoot as you go sometimes, uh, even though, you know, you have these long range plans that the commission does have um, and short term goals with those plans, you know, wrenches fly you know, everywhere from time to time. And you gotta learn how to catch those wrenches and keep it from hitting your head every once in a while. So that's kind of what, um, you know, you learn as being a commissioner on the commission is, you know, having to pivot um, and be, a, be able to really help the administration with their goals and um, being adaptable. And um, thank you. Oh, uh, you kind of answer this, uh, but I just want to ask this question, but I know it's gonna be kind of hard because you're really just saying it's a lot of things you're doing. What is the most important thing you want to do to improve uh, over there? Thank you for the question. And so one of the things, um, there was a long range uh, planning uh, commission that was set up early for the island. It's uh, all encapsulated in this one uh, product. It's called Eola Kanaloa, which holds the long-term goals, the short-term goals uh, for the restoration efforts on Ko'olawe. And so moving forward, um, the plan projects projected out from 2014 to 2026 and 2026 is right on around the corner. So I wanna you know, work with the administration of Kirk to see how we can uh, evaluate the goals that we set for ourselves and restoration efforts, and then seeing how far off from those goals we are and what it would take to get us back to a point if we're deficient in certain areas uh, to meeting those long range goals. So um, that's my hope if I'm able to serve another term is to keep us uh, on track with the rest of the commissioners and the Kirk administration, as far as looking at our long range planning and then seeing how our short term goals um, will support that long range, uh, those long range plans. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Chair. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Um, Salmalu, you're still employed. Um, with the county of Maui, in what role? Uh, thank you for the question, Chair. Um, I am the Deputy Director of the Department of Housing and Human Concerns currently. Okay. Um, well, you've heard and you know that we need a boat to serve its purpose. Um, perhaps you can communicate, and because I used to be on the council on the Big Island and a former mayor, but CDBG funds also are available, the county gives, um, and we have former council people here uh, as well. And so um, since Kaho'olawe is part of the Maui County's uh, region, um, perhaps um, consider asking the county council members for the district to see if they could start a funding, a portion of it. And perhaps at that time, uh, it could be, a, there's a possibility that we could use our CIP funds with a contribution from the County of Maui um, as dedicated funding to that particular purpose as well. So since we, <coughs> you're, and, and you're the chair of Kirk, so perhaps um, uh, that could be on your plate as well, if um, that could be a possibility. Sure. Uh, Certainly, and I'll go ahead and look into that. Um, sure. I, I, we have a CDBG, CDBG office uh, in the mayor's office. So um, I'll have those conversations and see if uh, there's movement sure. to add that as an item in the future. Yeah, and you know, again, like I say, you know, we uh, on this committee as well uh, that oversees um, this commission uh, is willing to do our fair share and contribute um, working in partnership. Senator Vavella, you were gonna add. <laughs> do, we, do we still have time for CIP? I mean, no, uh, excuse me, not CIP's um, no, resolutions? 
Oh, yes. Okay. okay. So I think this committee should make a resolution to the Navy and have them to donate a big portion of that for your boat okay. to Koho Lave. I think that would be a great resolution okay, to encourage. Let's, let's work on one and we'll have all of you sign on to it. All right. Thank okay, you. Okay. There's Brad. Get, you're you're thank ready. You, thank you. Okay. Any uh, further questions of Mr. Mata'afa? Hearing none, then um, we'd like to add that um, there has been communications um, uh, for his um, uh, confirmation on GM 582. We have uh, a, uh, let's see, <coughs> communications in support from Carol Marie Lee, Anella Evans, Matt Hatik Keyama, Lopaka White, and Jacqueline Ambrose. Okay, uh, mahalo. Thank you, and uh, we'll be uh, having the other two GMs uh, and uh, making decisions thereafter. Okay, Chair would like to um, continue on and welcome GM 585. This is submitting for consideration and confirmation to the Kaho'olawe Island Reserve Commission, Faith Kahele Saito for a term to expire June 30th, 2027. Michael Nahopi. Uh, Michael Nahopi, Executive Director for Kaholawe Island Reserve Commission. Uh, in behalf of the commission, uh, we like to stand on our testimony and strong support uh, for Ms. Saito. And she has been a previous employee with the Kirk and knows us very well and has spent a lot of time on the island. So thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Aloha and welcome. Aloha. Aloha. Okay. Well, this is a good time to be number two because we've had many discussions. Get the boat. Oh. <laughs> Get the boat. Uh, and, and other needs. We'd other like needs. to hear your uh, mana'u and mahalo uh, for, for accepting uh, this position as well. And, um, you know, you're, you've been an experienced person already in your contributions to the community. So, okay. Uh, more work for you. Aloha, Chair Inoue, Vice Chair Elefante, Senator Chang, and Senator Fivella. Um, you know, it's, a, it's an honor and a privilege to serve in this capacity. Um, as I've shared with you in the, the meeting that I had with both of you, you know, Kaho Olave has been an instrumental part of the last 23 years of my life. Um, a foundational, you know, um, a funda foundational piece uh, for which I serve. Um, as the Native Hawaiian counselor in Hon at Honolulu Community College. Um, and I also want to bring up, you know, I, I stand, I, I sit here, um, I sit before all of you, you know, given um, all of the sacrifices of all of the kupuna um, that have come, come before me, you know, from the Hui Alaloa folks on Moloka'i who started the Protect Koho Olave Ohana, uh, George Helm, um, all of the, the um, all of our leaders um, for the Protect Koho Olave Ohana that has allowed us, I think for my generation, um, to be able to serve in this capacity, to use the island as an educational tool, um, and to also um, inspire and enlighten um, a lot of the good work that has been done um, across our community. And so, you know, it's, it's an honor to serve in this position, um, as, as Mike has shared, um, I also served as a, as the cultural resources coordinator um, from 2000 and, uh, 2012, so I have an, a very good understanding of the um, the workings of the staff um, for the Kirk, um, and and also my dedication to um, to the ceremony of the Ipuakane. I think I shared a lot a little bit more with uh, Senator Elefante um, in bringing the rains to Koho Olave. To you know, there's there's always the under, uh, on the ground. Um, element of doing the work, right? The the good work that the Kirk does, um, but the intention of what Auntie Hoku um, did um, back in 1997 and bringing the kane, uh, bringing the kane mm. uh, ceremony to light, you know, through the through the Kirk, um, it's the spiritual part, you know. So I I I feel that I am um, competent. <laughs> um, I'm committed. Um, I, I, I will continue to do the work, whether I serve on the commission or not, um, and, and to serve um, those I, who I represent um, on, on behalf of the Protect Koho Olave Ohana um, and, and the greater communities that have been impacted, you know, for our Lahui, 
uh, for Pai Ainan and what Kaolabe serves um, for every single one that has been able to touch or has been inspired by the island. Okay, uh, and members, um, for your information as well, out of the six members, uh, she's um, there's two members that must meet the criteria and shall be appointed from the list provided by the Protect Kaholabe Ohana. Yes. So that's your the representative that um, uh, that you represent as well. Uh, you've also um, have done a lot. Uh, at the, at the university, uh, the community colleges yes. uh, as well. Um, and do you uh, have an, uh, you know, there's, you did some presentations as well, I understand, um, Living Hawaiian Place-Based Education Through Aloha Aina. Uh, was that uh, part of the role that you played um, as a student or as a teacher? I think in, uh, I think my time is a conference. 2020. Oh, 2020, okay. what was the year on that? Uh, 2020 was the um, oh, yeah. Hawaii Student Success yeah. Institute. Yes, yes, yes. That's um, definitely at, uh, as my role as faculty, as, the, as a counselor, something that um, I presented on. And uh, like I shared, you know, a lot of the work, a lot of the healing efforts that I do as a, as a counselor, you know, kind of given, um, the type of students that that gravitate to our um, to our campus, you know, there's a, a lot of social issues that these guys come from, and I feel that my work with Koholave has definitely informed um, the efforts of restoration and rehabilitation in the work that I do back at Honolulu Community College. I've also had the privilege and honor to to bring students and and um, our faculty and staff to the island and just the ability, and I hope, you know, someday all of you, if you haven't been yet, that you're able to come. We have Polaris's, uh, Senator Favela, so we can transport you um, on the Polaris's. You don't have to, you know, uh, we've, we've taken folks like Auntie Pua, Kanako Ole, and, and taken care of her, you know, so I'm sure that we can take care of you and, and get you to the important sites on the island. But really, you know, the, I've seen just, the Polaris, yes, yeah. and I wouldn't mind trying it. Yeah, so, it's okay. a good one. Well, the Polaris. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll right. take you to everywhere that you need to do. But yes, it, it, it definitely informs um, all the work that I continue to do and serve. You know, um, Oahu, you know, Honolulu is my oneha now, is the place where I was born. So I'm very passionate about serving my community, especially in a place like Kalihi, you know, and knowing some of the, the challenges and issues that we are, our people are dealing with. So my work, you know, like I said, uh, my work at, uh, or the work that I do and what I've been a part of as far as Ko'olave, um, the green that you see, right, that you've seen transform over the years is the green that I'm hoping to instill in, the, in my community of, of Kalihi Kapolama. And it's through uh -huh. that kind of, in, you know, so the, the the restoration efforts that we do on the ground on Koholave, the spiritual as well as well as what we do, you know, the the works of Pahigoshino and putting the plants in the ground is mm. is similar to the work in planting seeds in the minds of our of, of my people, you know, as, as serving as the Native Hawaiian counselor on our campus to plant those seeds, to cultivate them, um, to water them, to bring the spiritual element um, to that, so that they can serve. Um, building capacity to serve um, and, and to serve the community as well. And I've seen, you know, I've been, I've been able to see a lot of transformation in my work at, at Honolulu Community Beautiful. College as well. Questions for? Yes. No, she not sure more about it. <laughs> okay. Senator, I just get Senator, about it the Senator last Senator Favela. You know, what, was, what, what is the most important thing that you want, want to improve? I mean, you talked a lot of great improvements, but if you could just get that one improvement under your belt, what would that be? For me, it's, you know, it, it comes back down to, to build, to strengthening relationships. Mm -hmm. I, you know, for me, it's, it's if we have strengthening okay. relationships with all of you folks, yeah, maintaining the relationships that we have with staff, uh, maintaining the relationship uh, that the Protect Koholabe Ohana has with Kirk, um, and with the state, you know, and with the state is important because if we have a trusting relationship, right, uh, we can we can do anything. And if we're all on the same, um, we're all on the same page, and we're all working for the same goal, um, and that only can happen through um, 
building great relationships. And um, I just came back from a two week trip um, with some of my, my fellows over here, but we were on Hawaii Island. Um, and uh, we had a Maori, we were with um, some Alaskans and with Maori, amazing island that we got to see, mm. you know, uh, went to Pua Nui, Kapua Ola, we went up to Lake Waiau, um, all, all led by Neil Hannes um, in the First Nations program. But what um, my understanding, you know, one, one thing that stuck with me, it was a Maori, her name is Kiri Kofai. Um, and, and, and one thing that she said is, you know, move with the speed of trust, you know, and so that's, that's, that's where I'm coming from is moving, um, understanding that I represent the Protect Koholawe Ohana, um, understanding that we need to maintain this relationship. If it means hosting you folks on the island to educate you folks more about the island so you understand where the ask or where the movement, you know, what, how our movement is gonna be um, in terms of where we're gonna go in the future with the island. Um, it's, for me, it's all about maintaining um, and strengthening relationships. And I think we can do you know, as a collective unit between you folks as legislators, Mike um, and the Kirk staff, and, and those we represent um, on behalf of the Protect Kaho'olawe Ohana, we will get to that ultimate goal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is for me is kukulukea a kanaloa, is building the, the life and sovereignty of the island that will ultimately impact all of Hawaii. Okay. Okay. Any further discussions? Yeah. One more oh, sure. Thank you. Um, Mike, um, one question with regards to when we looked at the restoration of the island, the infrastructure for the water system are in place already. We have a um, one acre water catchment looking on oh, the top of the still island. still have the catchment yeah, system. A there. catchment system and about a half a million gallon storage. But that was built probably about 04. Uh -huh. And a lot of it's rusted. So we're slowly patching on it, uh, making repairs. Um, we've been trying to look at building some secondary water catchment systems, but it's mostly rain catchment and then we distribute out to the different planting areas. Oh, so, okay. yeah. Okay. So we do have plans in the future to build some more. All right. Okay. Any further questions of Ms. Saito? Otherwise, um, we will um, continue on to the second one. But um, for a GM 585, um, Faith Saito, we did receive um, communication. Is Pua here? Yes. Uh, representing DLNR. Aloha. Aloha, Chair. Pua Aie from the Department of Land and Natural Resources. Before I start on Kahale, I just want to mention we submitted late testimony. I apologize for um, no Mr. Problem. Mata'afa, and we also support his, his uh, we stand on our written testimony in support of Mr. Okay. Mata'afa. Thank you. So, Mahalo for your presence as well. Thank you. So the department supports Kahale, who has done a lot of work. Um, and we stand on a written testimony. But on a personal note, I just want to say I was fortunate enough to be driven around in a Jeep by her on Kaho'olawe to look at all of the sites. And she was a wonderful guide. And well, gracious. I'm happy somebody from the staff at, at DLNR is active as well. If you knew my family, you would understand. <laughs> oh, OK. All right. OK. So but, thank you. Um, mahalo. Mahalo for being here as well. And also, um, we've received uh, testimony uh, in support from Katie Camila Mela, uh, Carol Marie Lee, Anella Evans, Calvin Ho, Matt Hatekeyama, Lopaka White, Jacqueline Ambrose, Mick Mika, Mik, I think this one is Miki Ala, uh, Pescaya, Amber uh, Namaka Whitehead, Kylie Mar, and uh, Kale Aloha Lamho. Okay, mahalo, and you can have a seat uh, now as well. We proceed with the next GM, <clears throat> and this is GM 600, submitting for consideration uh, and confirmation to the Kaha'olawe Island Reserve Commission, Justin Keone Souza, for a term to expire June 30th, 2027. DLNR, as well as uh, Kaha'olawe. Uh, Mike Noel P. again for the Kahoolawe Island Reserve Commission. Thank you, Senators. Uh, on behalf of the Commission, uh, we stand in strong support for um, Trustee Souza's appointment to the Commission. I've known him for a very long time. Uh, he has played music for us many years as I've been a long-term hula dancer and competitive 
Mary Monarch dancer, so I've known him a long time for his days as Kalei Mayo, so thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Pua Ayu, on behalf of the Department of Land and Natural Resources, will stand on our written testimony and support. Thank you. Okay. Mahalo. Okay, Miss Trustee Souza. Aloha. Hello, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, Vice Chair Elefante, Senator Chang. Well, you've enjoyed hearing and hearing all of the issues as well as the discussions with regards to Kahu Olabi. Um, you need any more work on your plate? Um, <laughs> but, but, anyway, <laughs> but mahalo, thank you, no, for, thank you for accepting the governor's appointment. Thank you, Madam Chair. Hello to uh, Senator McKelvey as well as Fafello. Um, I know you asked me that question when we met, and um, you know, anytime we get to have a seat at the table and to influence good change and support the good work that uh, Michael has done so far and as well as the previous co commissioners, um, I had opportunities to be on the island. Um, the first time, kind of roughing it on Hockey Oava side. Um, sleeping bags on the beach, and then um, that was with Kamehameha with my uh, brother's class. And that's what class. we do on each island anyway. Yeah, camping, exactly. right? That's the same thing, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Except, yeah. <laughs> except you had to go on a boat. And then okay. Senator Favela going like this one. When my wife was pregnant, how probably with my oldest daughter, oh, I never like walked those hills, so they gave us that. You guys had on truck too at that time. Yeah, so I got to drive her around, so it was nice. But um, no, it, I, I got to see uh, the and take part in the restoration efforts. And um, such a great opportunity. Um, not done, of course. Um, and I, I know Pam touched on this earlier. Uh, building that gaps, uh, creating that relationships again, mending relationships in order to get the support for what we need on the island. Um, you know, um, I know we talked about the boat. Sorry, that was my fault, I think. <laughs> I planted the seed for us, OK? That's all I did. No. But uh, Senator Favela, I do support your resolution. Um, no, but yeah, I'm, I, I thank, uh, uh, thankful for the nomination. Um, I humbly ask for your vote, and um, I will serve to the best of my ability. So appreciate it. Any questions? If, if and um, as a member, um, as a trustee as well, uh, there's a seat, right, from OHA on the commission? Correct, yes. Okay. Have you been filling the seat for OHA then? Yes, we oh, did so, have. So you're familiar? Oh, we had one meeting, yes, oh, okay. last week, yes. Oh, OK. OK, any questions? Yes. Mr. Sousa. <clears throat> Senator McKelvey. So, thank you. Um, all joking with the vote aside, I mean, but if, do you think it'd be better to try to procure a contract with one of the existing boat companies? Because the, the whole thing with a boat brings up the fact of crew, right? You're going to have to, it's right. been right. lack of crew being able to hire crew to the procurement has been the big challenging of having the boat, right, at this point. Would that be, just be easier to do that instead of trying to have the, to hire a crew to be, you know, and the boat to get the boat itself? Or, I would entertain that. I mean, but I would defer also to uh, Executive Director Hopi. Uh, we actually have some of the best captains of Maui that work for us. Okay. Uh, I have a captain that has a 100 ton license and a mm -hmm. captain that has a 50 ton license. And most of the commercial boat operators don't have the captain license ratings that we have. We, um, I'm a former Navy uh, officer deck uh, qualified up to carriers. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot of the Marine training for our guys and boat training, making sure that they follow very high standards. So. Um, I, I think we prefer to have our own boat. It's just, you know, it's just the maintenance. That's uh, if we can find a company that take care of our boat, we'll, we'll, we'll try to do that too. But very few people far between on Maui that actually work on the type of boat we have, uh, because it's a, it's not like a dive. It's not a dive boat. It's a landing craft, and that's mm -hmm. the type of what we need. And most of the boats on Maui are, and even on Hawaii Island, um, are tour boats or fishing boats. Mm -hmm. And they're aluminum, not aluminum, they're fiberglass hull or they're the, the inflatable rib crafts. We have an aluminum boat with a very shallow draft and we use a jet drive system so we can go over the reef and land on the sand on the beach. So it's very unique. Um, it will be hard probably, I think, to try to find somebody who even has that kind of qualification experience because we're, we're the very few people who do beach landings and maneuver in shallow water and stuff like that. And then all my staff, we all train, we all cross train on the boat. So a lot of my field staff, they also serve as crew or land, line handlers, lookouts. Um, we have very robust boat training program for all my staff. So we're all boat crew people. And then finally, you know, UXO removal, restoring, was the cornerstone for the turnover from the Navy. 
I mean, is there gonna be, is there a vision of when th that might actually be accomplished, or do you foresee that you know there's gonna always be a reality of dealing with UXO on Kauai Island? When when they did the cleanup, you know, there was always the cleanup of Kahoolawi was never an exact science mm -hmm. because it's all about probabilities. You know, and that's how they determined how to do the cleanup criteria was the probability of the detector finding the, um, the bomb underground. And they had to find certain targets at a certain confidence level, like 80%, 90%, 85%, something like that, at certain depths. So, you know, the only 100% sure way of cleaning an island is you take all the dirt, you dig it all up, you sift it through, put the dirt back. And it's something that we're gonna have to deal with other areas other than Kahoolawe, Makua Valley, Boakaloa. You know, even if they do cleanups, any place that does clean up, it's all, the cleanup is to reduce the risk, not to eliminate the risk. So we're working on a reduced risk when we go through these areas, but we still have the training of all our staff and anyone who escorts the public out there is trained to identify and know the procedures of what is an unexploded ordinance or what the probability of finding unexploded ordinance is a certain place. And even um, uh, Commissioner Saito over here went through our training program and is qualified as one of our access guides and has experience in that. So we're doing this all to reduce the risk of liability on the island, but we'll never eliminate it. And just like you go anyplace else, you can never eliminate the risk of any accident or any kind of thing, but you make it less, you make it more palatable to the public. Thank you, Thank you Chair. Okay, thank you. Any further questions? Uh, Senator Favela, uh, let's, uh, yeah, yeah just, minutes, just kind of quick, because uh, hearing you kind of answer them um, going forward, but I'm just going to ask them anyway. Uh, um, what do you hope to accomplish as a commissioner serving Kohala? Well, um, you know, this is what I signed up for. This kind of aligns with what OHA's uh, trying to accomplish here. I know the ultimate end goal was eventually getting Kaho'olawe managed by a self-governing Hawaiian entity. And I think that would be something I would like to, you know, emoa in that direction and then follow through on. And, um, and of course, a lot of great things that they had already started, and I'd like to definitely follow through. Yeah. What is the one thing that you would want to improve as you learn and move? Well, just always make, make sure uh, we have the budget to, uh, to do what we need to do uh, and, and um, making sure the restoration efforts are, are moving in a timely manner, for sure. Okay, and just, just going forward, because you talked about aluminum, beach landing like that, mm -hmm. thinking of Navy SEALs, uh, old yeah. boat, you know, yeah. close to it being the yeah. And another thing too is that I'm really happy we have a Portuguese on the island. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you. Oh. Mahalo for that. <laughs> thank you, Chair. <laughs> okay. Mahalo, Senator, thank you. Yeah. Okay, any further questions of, of, of Mr. Sousa? Hearing none, then um, Mahalo as well. Uh, we have received uh, com some communications in support of your candidacy. Um, we did receive communications in support from Demon Kalai Manaole and Matt Hatekeyama, Lopaka White, and Anela Evans. Okay. Thank you, Mahalo Chair. again for your contribution to the state as well and for your volunteerism portion. Thank you. Thank of, you all for your time. Your Mahalo. Role. Thank you. Okay. Hearing none. Okay, members, let's go through our confirmation process um, in decision making. Uh, let's see. And we can take this, uh, is it okay if you can take it on, on one one uh, announcement? No? Yeah, yeah. Okay, one recommendation. Instead of, yeah, instead of, the individuals. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, okay, all right. Okay, Chair's recommendation then is to confirm, to pass and confirm um, the GMs before this committee. Uh, one is GM584, and this is submitting for consideration and confirmation to the Kaho Olave Island Reserve Commission, uh, Saumalu Mata'afa for a term to expire June 30th, 2027. And that was GM584. The next one is GM585. And this is the uh, GM585 nominee Faith Kahili Saito for a term to expire June 30th, 
2027 and GM 600. Uh, this is the GM for uh, Justin Keone Souza for a term to expire June 30th, 2027. Any discussions on the three? Hearing none, Vice Chair for the uh, vote. Uh, Chair goes aye on all three. Okay, Chair's recommendation is to advise and consent for GM 584, GM 585, and GM 600. Uh, we'll start first for GM 584. Chair votes aye, Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Chang. Aye. Senator McKelvey. Yes. Senator Favela. Aye. Madam Chair, recommend Jason is adopted. And for GM 585, are there any objections or reservations? Hearing none, Madam Chair, recommendations adopted. And for GM 600, any objections or reservations? Hearing none, Madam Chair, recommendations adopted. Okay, mahalo. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Okay, um, before that then, we got the two. Chair, gonna call for a short recess while we have our communications people. We'd like to have a picture with our previous nominees as well. So, short recess. Okay, the Committee on Water and Land uh, is still on its agenda of 8, uh, March 4th in room uh, 229, the 2 o'clock agenda. We'll be again proceeding with the last two items, but just again, I'm understanding that we need to say that um, uh, just some housekeeping uh, as well. We, uh, for all testifiers, we ask that you stand on your written testimony or limit your oral testimony to one minute, which this committee has a minimum agenda. So I think we'll be very uh, kind today um, as well to let the public know that the contact of this hearing can be found on the legislature's website. The live video stream and archive of the hearing is on the Senate's YouTube channel. Uh, and this decision making will occur after we hear the last two items on the agenda. Okay, members, uh, we will proceed then with GM 586, and this is submitting for consideration and confirmation to the Land Use Commission, uh, Nancy Carr Smith, for a term to expire June 30th, 2025. And I believe we do have, let's see, Land Use Commission. Aloha, thank you, Dan, for bearing with us today. It's okay. Yes. We appreciate your time. Thank you, uh, Chair Inouye, uh, Vice Chair Elefante, and members of the committee. We stand on our written testimony in strong support. Okay, mahalo, thank you. All right, Miss Nancy Carr Smith. Aloha. And thank you for also accepting the governor's appointment to this commission um, as well. Uh, and you're uh, representing as a member of the County of Hawaii. That's Aloha great. and welcome. Thank you and very much. as I mentioned earlier as well, there are many of you are volunteers, but that you're also a busy person. And we appreciate you adding more work to your job. <laughs> and welcome to the Capitol. Thank you very much. Thank you. And anything you'd like to share? Uh, and um, thank you. I, I got to meet with everyone except um, for Mr. McElroy. Um I'm sorry that we didn't get a chance to connect. But um, yeah, I appreciate the nomination by the governor. And that was last July. And I did um, immediately start my time on the commission. Um, I, started meetings in October and have been there ever since. Um, oh, so you've gotten your feet wet already. I have, yes. I've been interim, so yes. So um, it's sort of a natural progression from the volunteer work that I've done before um, on the county level, and um, the state is quite different. <laughs> I'm learning, um, but yes, um, I'm looking forward to representing Hawaii Island. 
Yeah. yeah. And we um, have forwarded you uh, at least um, a copy of your the mission of the Land Use Commission. Mm -hmm. um, and if you've had uh, any um, thing you'd like to add or know what your role is. And um, I'm sure that uh, for you, uh, it won't be a, a first time because you already have been attending some hearings last right. year uh, as well. <clears throat> and so there's um, the difference between um, boards and commissions that manage and approve developments that occur uh, throughout um, the state actually uh, as well and a lot of communication with the counties uh, and you know the where we are today with the disaster of the wildfires on on Maui um, you know the opportune time working with um, the the uh, director and the role and the mission is do we and you know Dan is here two members if you'd like to ask, ask questions because there seems to be like made perhaps some changes in your um, management then and you know maybe you should come up and, and talk uh, because I'm sure my the members is um, housing is going to be very very important um, and to see if you're amenable to see and make some necessary changes with regards to to what um, governor has already put in place with regards to either the emergency proclamations or how we're going to work with counties with regards to exemptions or speedy up term uh, you know permit systems as well and I'm happy that we have our housing chair with us it's Senator Chang probably will be interested to see if are we going to look forward to some changes uh, or speed up a process that you probably already have an opportunity to proceed making those decisions or do you have to comply first with the, the county's ask or you can also mandate some of the things you'd like to move forward to get housing on the ground um uh, well chair um there's so many aspects to sure. that question I'm, I'm not sure where to start um i will say that one of the things that we're doing this year that is different for the land use commission is that we have a position um, that was given to us to work with developers to try and expedite projects that have not that have been approved but haven't been built and we're seeing a lot of progress with that um, as far as expediting projects are concerned we um, are very quick to move projects forward um, and we, we continue to be dedicated toward doing so. In reality, the, the biggest problem that we have right now is chapter 343 process, the environmental right. It, it takes two years or more to get that done and we can't start to move on a project until that's done. Um, it's an important process. Um, it gets wrapped up in our process. But as soon as they're done with that, as soon as as soon as a, a petitioner is done with that, we move as rapidly as we can. We've moved our petition approval process back from 180 days to, which was the maximum, to 60 days before we get to hearing. Um, and that's by working with developers to make sure that everybody is up to speed, um, and that our our parties, which is the counties and uh, the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development, all have been talking so that by the time we get to hearing, there's consensus on how the projects are going Can to Can you kind forward. of brief us? Um, we have so many chapters in our HRS <laughs> system. Can you brief us more or less or let the public know what the uh, issue is with Chapter 343? Well, Chapter 343 is the environmental review process. Um, commonly known as the EA or EIS process. Um, that has certain time frames involved that doesn't have anything to do with whether or not a party is ready to move forward. Um, there are extended time frames for posting of an of a EIS or an EA and then a response period and then the petitioners are required to answer all the questions 
that they receive. And that, that can be burden, a burdensome process. Um, I don't know how you can expedite that. Um, elect, maybe a buy it through an electronic process of some kind requiring it that it all be electronic. Um, but, you know, to a certain extent, it's an important process because we know we have to know what we're dealing with with the land that's being um, proposed for development. Um, the biggest issue with those, of course, are whether or not there's any cultural resources that are involved. <coughs> um, and the cultural resource studies are one of the keys to the environmental process. Um, there are water issues, especially in the Maui area that we also have to deal with. Although I think that one of the things that we've come around to is actually being involved in the process and coming up with solutions, getting the parties all in a room, uh, Commission on Water Resource Management, Board of Water Supply, and the developers themselves, and maybe even some neighboring developers to try and see if we can resolve the water issues. But at this point in time, you have been moving things out to the best you can in cutting your time periods, as you mentioned. Yeah. Um, and um, perhaps now this is kind of interesting members as well, because oftentimes we always have, uh, when we look at, there's proposals being uh, before us before, but anytime someone wants to be exempted from the EA or the EIS will never pass. But there's something that was interesting that could be done instead of being exempted in its entirety that you can look at the time periods. Because on an e shot clocks. Uh, what's on the shot clock? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's something we proposed in the past, right? Shot clocks. Were yeah, so you know, um, and again, like I say, you will never pass legislation to, for any real exemptions. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, there's something that we can all think about. Um, and perhaps can we, uh, because, uh, and earlier Senator Favela, you know, brought the, up the fact that we still have time for resolutions um, as well. But if that's a stumble block, you know, moving forward with, with making sure that housing will move faster at this point, particularly for that region, um, it's important that we also do our fair share of how we, we can make that uh, in, as an important tool. Because you know we're confirming two um, new members to the commission, and it's so difficult for us to ask them that kind of questions yeah. because that's beyond yeah. them. And so that's why I'm glad you're here before us as well and maybe we can work on something in a resolution and see how we can do that and if you can help us create um, some language and see if it's possible well, more than happy we, to you know chat. this committee would be very more helpful in chat. trying to see if we can do that yeah okay more if you can get some information okay. thank you so much thank you okay all right uh, any questions members on our yes. uh, nancy our new member representing hawaii county yeah. senator favela yeah just there's a two um, well, look like three, but it could be two. Um, what do you hope to accomplish as a new commissioner serving at the LUC? What do I hope to accomplish? Um, well, I'd like to see some progress and collaboration. Um, I haven't seen a lot of that yet um, in the meetings that I've attended, so. I'm hoping that there can be some improvement in that regard. Okay, that was the second question. So as going forward, how, how can you bring back the trust to the people when it comes to the, the um, Land Use Commission? Because mm -hmm. you, you know that this is a lot of, I mean, what you already just said is already uh, uh, going forward, but what, what can you do to start earning, that, not you, but bringing the trust back to the LUC? Right, right. Yeah, I've, I've spoke to several people that have told me that they avoid going to the LUC yeah. at all cost. <laughs> and I, I think that that's sad and that yes. it shouldn't be that way. Um, what I, I'm new, I'm still learning this process, but I'm hoping again that there will be more collaboration um, between the staff and the commission and the counties and OPSD. I think there's room for that. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, Chair. You. 
and I'm sure you're aware of what's uh, the comments you made uh, with regards to coming before because you are you still practicing as a realtor? I am. Oh, okay. So you're familiar with that that's been part of a stall. Right. Okay. A real quick question. Yes, Senator McKelvey. Um, well, you know, there's also another side of the coin, and that is you've heard our colleagues, you know, Senator Richards and other talk about ag, protecting ag lands, importance of ag lands. I mean, do you see the commission also as an important tool in trying to preserve our prime ag lands and ag production, you know, against some of these non-conforming applications or other things that may impact that side? I do. Um, I think it's important, but I, I also see each county as being so very different. Um, so I don't, uh, preserving ag and on one island looks much different from my perspective than it does on another island. Yeah. Um, on Hawaii Island, we have so much ag space and very little of it is actually in working ag lands. Yeah. Um, so I think there's there's room if if housing is what we need. I think there's room for um, some boundary adjustments so there can be more housing. Um, I think that's a critical piece. It may not be the best answer on other islands or on other parts of islands. So I think that the ag production is in certain areas, um, but we have so much ag land on Hawaii Island, and I'm still learning about the extent of that on the other islands. Yeah, it was interesting though, but then you hear about the need to convert deal on our lands to pastoral lands. Right, back, right. So, anyway, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank sure. you very much. Oh, just a follow -up. Yes, one more the, question, question Senator the, Favela. Yeah, the question that I have is that, uh, you probably cannot answer them, but I remember participating back in the Land Use Commission for whole Pili, and then the ruling went that they could develop the, the land that everybody was keep on harping on there was uh, ag, B land, whatever, but that was all fill back in the day. The reason why I'm going with this is because after the thing went to the Land Use Commission, Land Use Commission called them back and then they told them that they now needed to go in phasing. By doing that, it delayed the project, construction costs went up, and then was having a lot of issues with how the phasing was going to take place. So I just, to me, not saying that you can do anything now, but Going forward, when you guys have that kind of decision, I, I would like to know what would be the, the pushback to actually going back and ruling and having them going through phasing when they had shown their project, just like Coral Ridge, they showed the project and the project was approved and then the Land Use Commission came back and said, come back. And then the reason why I say that, we get with the housing, we have, we have a lot of investment in growing, out, not growing housing, growing the use of having good quality housing. But when something comes back like that, that thing delayed the project, we already waited for 20 years to get it going forward. Then now, Chair, up in Kunia, we have a ag land that is using, not for one agricultural use, right. mansions, trucking companies, everything else but farming. And that's the problem that I keep having with these guys because they put whole Pili, Core Ridge, and all the rest of the developers to the grill, to the grill, mm -hmm. delayed the building of those subdivisions, costing our families, cheap, not cheaper, a reasonable price housing. And then we have stuff like this going on. So is there something they be laid on, you can tell us legislationally, and how we can stop this kind of abuse when it comes to our ag land, when we already knew in the future that that area was the second city of Ever Beach, but they didn't change it to Kapolei. Mm -hmm. But just saying, before I was out of elementary, that was promised to be the areas where they was going to develop. Do you mm -hmm. want an answer from yeah. the director? If, if can, I mean, no, yeah, from if Dan, can, yeah. because he's familiar with the region. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you, Chair. And, um, Thank you so much. We'll give you a couple of minutes for the answer. Okay. We need to get out of here yeah. in, okay. by four. Sorry, sorry. I mean, you don't, if, if not sure, that's okay. Yeah. You can just email it to us. Yeah, it's, yeah, not, yeah. It's, okay. it's, it's not have to be on the record yet. I, I asked a question, but you can send it to us through uh, correspondence. That's good enough. Okay. That's uh, well, Senator, very, very quickly, okay. um, the the Co uh, Hopili and Coal Ridge were, came back to us several times. We didn't pull them back and say, you're going to have to phase it. It was their proposal to phase it, not ours. 
Um, it's unfortunate that, that there was a economic downturn in the middle of that development, and that kind of threw a monkey wrench in the works. I think we would have that if we didn't have that economic downturn. Um, but we, and that's why our new position, right? We're working really hard with developers to try and see how we can expedite development now, rather than just throwing it to the wind and walking away. Yeah. So thank you. Appreciate. It. Thank well, you, there will be a, a much cost um, increases over time yeah, too yes, when it's exactly. delayed. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank, you, thank you. If there's any other questions for um, for Nancy, no, uh, we'll you, Nancy. call on our second um, nominee. Then thank Thanks you so much. much. Thank you. Thank you for taking time as well, uh, members. Let's proceed to GM uh, six ten, and this is submitting for consideration and confirmation to the Land Use Commission, Bruce Wu for a term to expire June 30th, 2028, and um, Dan Orendecker, Land Use Commission. Thank you, Chair, and I, all Vice Chair Alicante, and members of the committee, we stand on our written testimony and strong support. Okay, mahalo, thank you for being, thank you so much as well, um, Bruce, but, at least we can say mahalo for the work you've done uh, in your role, but it was good to hear that you're kind of semi-retired in a sense, so you're giving your whole hum time for Land Use Commission. And welcome. Thank you. Oh, well, first of all, thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here, one. Second, I'd like to thank you guys for meeting me one-on-one. -on -one. Brief history about me, I'm from Maui, I love Maui. And if given the, the approval, I'll be humble to serve on the uh, State Land Use Commission. Okay. And members, um, he is representing the at-large position as well. Okay. And uh, thank, thank you so much. And you've, you've heard the discussions um, and, and moving forward, it's your island that we have been committed this um, session, uh, in particular the Senate, um, to a lot of discussions with regards to Maui and, and making sure that, um, you know, we, we can we move in a direction that will uh, continue to hurry up uh, and assisting your county in moving uh, Maui ahead. It, no different than including uh, developments that will occur. Uh, it'll be a big job as well. Um, I will uh, ask for comments from our Members of the committee, any well, discussion? Well, just just on comment. I mean, I don't want to say Senator Favela. I'm just glad that you know you have the background of development with working with the carpenters union and being a carpenter. So going forward, I know that you're going to bring that expertise uh, to the land use commission. I think that's going to be something that is that is great, that is different. Yeah, I mean, not everybody gets the same background. You, you're not a realtor, you're a carpenter. So. Maybe you guys can work together to build houses. <laughs> that would be great. Thank you, Chair. Appreciate That's it. That's why the commission needs to be a more of a variety of people in their backgrounds, you know, more yes. diverse as well. Yes. Any yes. further so, questions? You might have Senator so that, McAlvey. Thank you, Bruce, for being in here and everything. Thank and, you, you Senator. I appreciate our conversations. I mean, Carpenters, of course, is one of the key delivering some quality housing along the way for everybody back in West Maui. Um, you know, one of the things, you know, concerns that came up when you were nominated was that, you know, coming from the county, coming from the carpenters, that you would like look to the LUC as like a hostile entity, right? And the one that is in the way, an impediment. Do you think now being on the LUC, working with the commissioners, that there's value for the LUC uh, insofar as an entity to oversee development uh, and the particular boundary, district boundary amendment issues? That you know, first, you know, when you go into somewhat, some, something brand new and green, the first thing you want to do is absorb the process. And so I would never say negative things against the LUC because that would be unfair or because I've never been a part of it. Mm -hmm. Having said that, I would push for housing. I, I'd hate to say that our number one export is our people. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. you know, that's something that needs to change. My whole, holistic approach is to find the balance of land use and human use. And I think that's the balance that I'm looking for on my end goal as part of me being a part of, uh, if allowed, to be on the Land Use Commission. Any, any further questions? No? Okay. 
Thank you again. Mahalo for taking time to be here in person as well. And good luck to you. Thank you okay. very much. We'll proceed uh, members then for the last of the agenda item. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Sorry about that. My vice chair is actually very good about keeping me on track uh, with regards to uh, the first one, uh, GM 586. And this is uh, Nancy Carr Smith. We did receive 29 in support, no opposition. And the support came from the County of Hawaii, the office of the mayor, uh, Susan Leloy as well from the Council on Hawaii County, County of Hawaii Planning Department, Zendo Kern, uh, Ash Ashley Kirkowitz, another council member, uh, Craig Anderson of Mauna Kea Resorts, Keith Kato of the Hawaii Island uh, CDA, which is the Hawaii Island Community Development Corp. Uh, all in support, Colin Mura, Wayne Higaki, Rhonda Bell, Diane Chadwick, Tim Bostock, Darren Arai Melvin, David Greenwell, Riley Smith, Britt Bailey, Neil Thomas, Ryan Ushijima, Victor Tom, Toby Taniguchi, Michael Shattuck, Dan Giovanni, James Hustis, Makai Freitas, Patty Cook, Susan Maddox, Rit Matsuda, and William Moore. On behalf of GM610, uh, and this is uh, Bruce Uu, we have um, Bianca uh, Isaki, Sense Communication uh, in opposition, but um, IT did, was there an alert for uh, a Zoom on a member, Bianca Saiki, uh, Isaki? Um, not present on Zoom, Chair. Okay. She wasn't on Zoom. All right. In support, Carrie Kapoi. Wesley Lowe and Kyle Chalk in support. Okay, we'll proceed then with decision making on GM 586. This is submitting for con con consideration and confirmation to the Land Use Commission. Uh, the nominee, Nancy Carr Smith, for a term to expire June 30th, 2025. Any discussions? Members, hearing none. Uh, by, uh, Vice Chair for the vote, Chair goes aye. Okay, Chair's recommendations to advise and consent on GM 586. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator Chang. Aye. Senator McKelvey. Yes. Senator Favela. Aye. Madam Chair, recommendations okay. adopted. Thank you. GM 610, submitting for consideration and confirmation to the Land Use Commission on the nominee Bruce Uu for a term to expire June 30th, 2028. Any discussions? Hearing none, Vice Chair for the... Oh. Oh, sure. Any discussions, Senator McKelvey? No, I want to th thank Bruce for stepping up and serving the community. And, and, you know, we share the vision to bring our people home. And so having you there and to be able to bring the resources is super important. So thank you for moving this nomination okay. forward. Thank you, Senator. Um, okay, for the vote on GM 610, uh, Vice Chair for the vote, Chair goes aye. Chair's recommendations to advise and consent on GM 610 of the five members present on Waterland. Any no votes or votes with reservations? Hearing none, Madam Chair, recommendations adopted. Okay, thank you. Congratulations and good luck. Aloha. And this ends the land, uh, Water and Land Committee meeting of March 4th.